Have you ever had a decision facing you that sort of put you in a position where you were just had a lot of anxiety and uncertainty about which way to go with the decision? Should you take that opportunity or not? Should you choose to do that thing or not? And maybe you ended up losing sleep over and you just didn't really know what to do. Tonight, I'm going to share with you a success tip to be able to help you make confident decisions boldly and be assured that you're making the best decision that you can and be able to not worry about what if did I make the right decision. There's nothing worse than making a decision and feeling uncertain in that decision. And I'm going to help show you some how to be able to make decisions confidently and boldly. Hey, listen, my name is Jackie O'Quinn. I'm a master trainer here with Destiny Global. I first started out as a client of Destiny Global's back in 2005. I attended a live training event called First Step Success. At that event, I was trying, I was working full time as a registered nurse, but I was trying to start some sort of a part time online business. And quite honestly, I didn't know what I was doing. I went to that three day training event, came out of that event, applied one technique. I learned a lot of things, but I applied one main technique that I learned at that event. And literally within days, it made my first profits and then ended up doing about $6,000 that month. My first year did $70,000. On a part-time basis, I was still working full-time as an RN. My second year ended up doing a little over $100,000, $120,000 that year. And I actually ran that business. I ended up becoming my primary source of income. And I started several more businesses over the years and made my first million dollars. And listen, I could go on and on and tell you about all the accolades that I achieved in business. But what's important for you to know is that I was asked to be a trainer with Destiny Global. And I said yes. And the main reason I said yes was because I remember what it was like in the beginning. And I believe that everybody has the ability to have success. And I believe that all of us have a purpose in our life that we're supposed to fulfill. And clues to that purpose lies within the goals and dreams inside of us. And it's important for us to, first of all, wake up those goals and dreams inside of us. Understand that we're worthy to accomplish them. And then to be equipped with the proper skill to be able to see those goals and dreams get accomplished. So when I bring you a success tip, my goal is within about 10 or 15 minutes, I want to be able to give you something quickly here that you can take away, take down some quick notes, jot down some, some ideas that you, and be, I want you to be able to take away some tangible concepts that you can start implementing in your life. And tonight I want you to start implementing how you can be able to start making confident decisions moving forward, minimize anxiety anytime you have a decision facing you. Because over the years, I watched a lot of people struggle and even fail to make decisions in their life that they probably should have made. And I think there's nothing worse in life than the pain of regret. And I don't want you to have to suffer that regret. So let's get into this. A couple of things. I'm going to give you one, two, I'm looking at my notes, one, two, three, three key strategies that you can use. And I've got a lot down here, but I'm going to pull out three because I want you to be able to take this and implement it immediately. So first things first, anytime that there is something facing you, whether it's um, anytime you have a decision in front of you that you need to decide yes or no. Do I do it? Do I not? Do I take action or do I not? Uh, do I go here or do I go there? Here's what's important for you to do. It's important that you avoid what's known as analysis paralysis. where you, you and This is where anxiety comes from. Like Anxiety comes from two places, either not having enough information or having too much information that you just keep replaying in your head over and over again, over and over again. So first thing you need to do is give yourself a timeline to gather all the information. So if you're looking to, for example, get, you know, seek a new job promotion, there's a, you know, a new promotion is available and you want to decide if you want to go for it. Of course, tonight I'm not talking about this, but you want to make certain that you have all the relevant conversations. If it's going to affect your kids, have a conversation with your kids. If it's going to affect your spouse, have a conversation with your spouse. If it's going to adjust your lifestyle, make certain that you have a conversation with those people who are going to be affected. Make certain, of course, that they're on board. But then give yourself a time period. Maybe it's 24 hours. Maybe it's 48 hours. Whatever you need, give yourself a relatively concise time period to be able to gather all the information that you can get together to help you make a good decision. You don't want to linger into information gathering mode. I don't have enough information. I don't have enough information. I don't have enough information because oftentimes information gathering is an excuse for continued procrastination. Did you hear me? Information gathering is an excuse for continued procrastination. Procrastination comes up anytime that we are put in a place that's uncomfortable. And some, for some people, making a decision can be uncomfortable. 
So we will avoid making the decision by procrastinating and we tell ourselves that we need to procrastinate because we just need more information. We just need more information. To, so what you want to do is give yourself a set amount of time to gather information and just take action. Gather all the information you can. Don't worry about making a decision. What's needed, what's necessary. You know, Develop all the pros and cons that you can about the, the topic. Get all the details together that you can. And then once you have all the details together or most of the details together because you'll never have everything, you'll never have all the information there. Now it's time to make a decision. Point number two I want to tell you real quick is you can't outsource this decision. All too often, I see this a lot in business. Entrepreneurs will hire a consultant or they'll hire some sort of marketing expert and they want that person to be able to make all the decisions about where their business should go. As a business owner, it's important for us to be able to make decisions and then we hire people to help guide those decisions. Like, I need to know what outcome I'm looking for before I can hire someone to help create that outcome. I can't expect them, that person that I hire, that new hire, that new consultant, to tell me everything that's required about running my business. So you can't outsource decision making. That's important for you to understand. No matter whether it's a business decision or any sort of life decision, ultimately it comes down to you. Hey, we're big boys and big girls. We get to adult. It's not always fun, but we get to do that and we get to make decisions. So let's make those decisions confidently. So here's a couple of tasks. Number one, sit down, give yourself a time period to get this done. I, and I mean like five minutes. Write down every pro you can, all the, all the positive reasons you, can, you should make this decision. Then make a list of all of the negative reasons, all of the things that you don't, all, uh, make a list of all the things that you, reasons you shouldn't, all the negative reasons, all the cons. So make a complete list of pros and cons so you have that done. Sometimes just getting the, the that information out and on paper is really, really important to help you kind of sort of back up, take a bird's eye view and to be objective about what you're looking at. And sometimes you'll figure out that your pros list is much longer than your cons list or your cons list is much longer than your pros list. And if you see that, that's, that's important information. Now, by the way, the length of the list does not necessarily determine what, which decision you make. It's just about getting that information down out of your head. Because here's the thing about our minds. Our minds are capable of having millions of thoughts. Like, even within a minute. We can have, our minds are, are like supercomputers constantly. But they're not super, they're not a freeway, meaning we can't have multiple thoughts at the exact same time. We can only have one thought at a time. So a lot of times we think about pros and cons, but as we're thinking about the pros and cons, we're not able to sort of remember them all or get them all out. So give yourself like three to five minutes, write down a complete exhaustive list of everything you can think of, even if it doesn't sound major or even if it sounds really major. It doesn't matter. Everything is just a total brain dump. And that's just to help you sort of clear your mind. Now, here's the other thing that you want to do. I recommend that you journal. Now, I know, you know, some people like journaling. Some people don't. Some people just want to have a you know, verbal conversation. Whatever's fine. But it's really good to be able to get some thoughts on paper. Again, it's, it's that brain dump. Get, getting everything off of your mind so you can think clearly and you can see your thoughts. A couple of things you want to journal. Number one, by the way, is to give yourself a list of pros and cons. That's going to help you when you start journaling. Journaling, a couple of things you can think about, or journaling prompts is what I call them. One is start writing down, uh, start talking to yourself as if you were coaching yourself into making the decision. So talk, talk to yourself in, as you're journaling, but talk to yourself as a good friend who feels like the decision that is facing you is a good one and you should make that decision. And just write. And of course, it's going to include some of your pros as well, but just keep writing. And then do the same thing with your cons. It's a separate exercise. You don't do it like first write as a friend trying to talk you into the decision. Do that exhaustively. You know, you can write a page, you can write 10 pages, you can write 50 pages. It doesn't matter. Just do that until you're just exhausted and you can't think of anything else to say. Don't be repetitive. I mean, you are going to probably be a little bit repetitive, but don't just keep writing to write, to write, to write. Just make an argument to yourself. Then write from the opposite angle. Write as if you're a friend and you're trying to talk you out of the decision because you feel like it's a bad decision. And again, it's going to include some of your cons in there, but just write. Now, here's what happens sometimes. Sometimes when you, when you do this exercise and you go back and read it, you'll realize that even though you were trying to talk yourself into the decision, you end up 
keep as you're writing, you realize you're talking yourself into the decision, into the decision, and then you, you keep writing doubt. But be careful for this, or be aware of that, and and you realize that even though you were supposed to be journaling to yourself, talk to yourself into the decision, you realize, wow, I was actually also talking myself out of the decision, out of the decision. And then when you go look at the other exercise where you were supposed to be talking to yourself out, you'll realize, oh, I, that whole time I just talked to myself out. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, yes, just because, by the way, remember this, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yes, I can take this opportunity, but maybe I shouldn't. And so, and by the way, the opposite is also true. Sometimes you'll find that you're writing and you're trying to talk yourself out of the decision and then all of a sudden you start talking yourself into the decision. That's, that's a good sign. Another thing you can journal on is write down, what if I do this? What will happen? Best case scenario. If I take this decision, what will happen? Best case scenario. Another one is if I don't do this, what will happen? So again, two different things you can write about. Here's another journaling prompt. These are all separate things you can journal about. It'll just help you basically get your thought out there. A lot of times the reason we have trouble making decisions is because it's, we're struggling in our emotions. So you've got to unpack those emotions somehow. Why am I excited is a journaling prompt. So just, just write. It may be three sentences. It may be 300 or 3,000. Why am I excited? Another one is why am I fearful? Why am I fearful? Just because you're fearful, by the way, doesn't mean you shouldn't do something. In fact, quite the contrary. Fear is normal and natural. But it's important to understand why are you, why are you fearful? So number one so far is you want to make a list of pros and cons. Number two, you want to journal. And I just gave some ideas of journaling prompts. Here's number three. Look at the worst case scenario and ask yourself. The worst case scenario, if it comes true, what is it? And what would I do about it? And is it okay? Let me give you an example for me. I had the opportunity to start a business. A business, by the way, that ultimately transformed my life. I told you a little bit about it earlier. That business, I started that business, I had several months of really, everything was going great in business. I ended up moving, ended up relocating. I, I was making thousands of dollars every single month, way more money than I was earning at the time, full-time as a nurse. And then something happened. All of a sudden, I had about a, a, a probably a 45-day period where my business hadn't made any money. And I had not experienced that before and never thought that I would at that time. I was naive. And all of a sudden, I was running out of money and I was faced with a decision. Do I, I was, I'd moved to another state. So I had a girlfriend. She was actually my neighbor. We lived next door to each other. And it, but it was like a relatively new relationship. I'm not going to borrow money from my girlfriend. I didn't have a lot of possessions. I had a used car. I had a little bit of living room furniture. That's all I had. I just moved, you know, and I, I'd only, yeah, I didn't have a lot of belongings. So I thought about selling my car, but then I was like, well, how would I go get a job if I need to get a job? I was really in turmoil. And I finally made a decision. I said, what is the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is I take this little bit of money I have left because I had like $1,200 that I needed to use for advertising. And I was like, I can take this little bit of money left. I can use it for advertising. And if I make money, great. And if I don't, then I will have to move out and I'll move to the Salvation Army and they'll help me get a job. I'll get government housing. I'll get back on my feet. And eventually, I'll, you know, when I save up a few dollars, I'll start advertising my business again. And when I start making money, things will start rolling again. When I realized, even though, listen, now at the time I wasn't married, didn't have kids. This would be a much different decision. Um, but all of a sudden I realized the worst case scenario isn't like death and destruction, despair. Oftentimes we fear the unknown, but sometimes once we understand what the known plan is and like if that happened, if the worst case scenario happened, I would still be okay and I would make it. Sometimes... Entertaining the worst case scenario can give us peace of mind. Like, okay, I don't want that to happen, but I'll, I'll be all right. Um, by the way, I'll share, I'll tell you, I ended up making money, but I'll share more details at, at first steps of success. Probably. Um, if I forget, you can ask me if you're there, but I'll show more details about what happened, but it ended up being great. I ended up making money that month and, and I eventually went on and obviously had an incredible year and a successful business. And I can tell you more about that another time. But again, it was entertaining. Once I entertained the worst case scenario, it was like, okay, I got this. And I was able to move forward confidently and I wasn't fearful like every day, like, oh my goodness, what if money doesn't come in? What if I don't have any clients? What if I don't make any sales? I wasn't worried. I just went to work and yeah, it ended up being amazing actually. It was crazy. That wouldn't have happened had I hung out in anxiety, despair, you know, uncertainty. All right. So 
entertain the worst case scenario and ask yourself, would you be okay with it? Obviously understanding that you don't want to have the worst case scenario. All right, next step. I think it's point number five that we're on now, four or five. Seek wise counsel. Now you want to be careful about this. Make certain that when I say seek wise counsel, I don't mean I don't mean go to your spouse if your spouse has already said they're on board with whatever decision you make. I don't mean go to them and talk it over with them because that's going to sometimes create additional anxiety because your spouse is uncertain. So if you're uncertain, your spouse is going to be uncertain and that's not helpful. I don't mean go to just your best friend per se. You need to go to an objective source. Don't go to someone who's incentivized by your decision. I mean, if I was trying to buy a new house, I wouldn't go to the realtor who's selling me the house to talk to them about my decision. They're incentivized for me to buy the house. You need to go to an objective source. Go to somebody. If, if you have a coach, go to a coach. That's a great source. If you have a coach, I'll, I can give you some resources here in a minute, but a, a, a coach is one source. If you have a coach that you're working with, another resource would be look for someone who's been through what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to get a, a, a new job at a new location, do you know somebody else who works there that you can talk to in the similar position? If you're trying to start a business, do you know someone else who has started a similar business? And being able to sometimes just talk it over with someone else, especially if they can be like, hey, I did it and I'm okay. I'm glad I did it or I did it and it's been fine, but I regret it. Like you would want to know that as well. So look for a, an objective, unbiased person to be able to talk to and be able to talk through some of the things that you've journaled and just be able to share their ideas. What do they like about it? Why are they glad they made the decision? Is there anything they regret about it? Also, then I'll tell you this, and this wouldn't apply to everyone, but I'll, I'll say this. At the end of the day, when all else fails and you've done these steps, do this. I personally believe in prayer. So I always say, because a lot of people who believe in prayer will be like, I'm going to pray and wait for an answer. You don't have to pray and wait for an answer. Oftentimes, your answer is going to be muddled by your own fears and uncertainty. So here's what you do. I pray and I ask for the Lord above to please guide my steps. And then I take a step praying that it's guided. I, already, I believe he answers prayer. I pray that he would guide my steps. And then I take a step praying that it's guided. And that if there's some reason I'm not supposed to move in this direction, then my way will be stopped. It will be blocked. And then I, I just continue to move forward. And by the way, that's that's common for me. Anytime I'm about to make a big decision, I just say, Lord, please bless my path forward. Give me direction as I move forward. Because it takes faith to move forward. And there's oftentimes a lot of fear stopping us. And fear and faith can't coexist. And I'll leave it right there. But I always pray that he guides my steps and then I just take a step forward. Listen, whatever decisions are facing you, you can, over, you can make confident decisions and you can move forward. You don't need to allow anxiety, oftentimes anxiety of the unknown and uncertainty to stop you. It is expected. Every decision is just an opportunity to grow. If you feel whatever your emotional reaction is initially, just take a step back from that. Maybe your emotions are accurate, or maybe they're not. Maybe your fear is justified, but maybe it isn't. Maybe your excitement and enthusiasm is justified, but maybe it isn't. So take a step back. You want to make your decision confidently. And here's another tip. I'll give you this as a bonus tip, then I'll get out of here. Well, I got a resource I told you I would give you. Let me give you this resource, then I'll give you the bonus tip. Oftentimes, it's important that you have good counsel. And a lot of people, they're not like, if you're trying to become an entrepreneur, it's not common to be in an, uh, a community of other people that are entrepreneurs. You might be the only person in your family who's trying to start a side business. So you don't know other people and you don't know where to turn to. You're trying to get a promotion on your job, but everybody else in the workplace can be a bit toxic. You know, they all hate the boss and they're all just waiting to get out at five o'clock. And here you are trying to actually get ahead in your position. And it's like, who do I turn to? Where do I find people? You know, iron sharpens iron. Where do I find people where, where everybody's moving together and wanting to accomplish something better and make good decisions in their life? Where do I find those people? People that are a resource that I can be able to reach out to sometimes and call on and to be able to bounce ideas off them. An objective third party. Where can I find some of those people? Listen, first steps to success for a lot of people is a great resource. Our clients who go to those training events and those seminars, our next one's coming up. September 13th, 14th, and 15th. Listen, I believe if you weren't supposed to be there, you wouldn't be hearing about this right now. I genuinely believe that. The event is likely to sell out, but that hotel in particular, the room block is discounted and that will sell out. So I would call the hotel, go down in the link below, and there should be a link in the comments, 
go or in the description, go click on that link, get registered right away and get your hotel, your hotel information is up there, get your hotel. Join us at First Steps to Success. If you want to be able to be a part of a community that supports you and be able to get training and skills along the way, then it's going to be at First Steps to Success. We have incredible people who attend these events and I'm talking about just the attendees. I'm not talking about the trainers themselves. The trainers are extraordinary humans and you're going to be able to learn from them as well. These are trainers who trained my organization and my team when I was building business and trainers who I still learn from to this day. It's at first step to success. Now, with that being said, I told you I'd give you, um, I would give you a bonus tip. And here's a bonus tip for you. Whenever you're looking forward to making a decision, expect that when you have that fear inside of you, I use fear as maybe a little bit of confirmation. If I, if I feel anxious about something, I always take that as a positive, a healthy thing. Don't be upset whenever you're in a position that you feel a little bit of anxiety. Embrace anxiety and understand that, that is a chance for growth. You get to grow, you get to be stronger, you get to be better. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I look forward to seeing you here on a next, another success tip. Be sure to follow the play page, like the page if you haven't already. Also, if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. I'll try to respond if I see them. But most importantly, I look forward to seeing you at the next First Step Success. I'm going to be there in Raleigh, North Carolina, September 13th, 14th, and 15th. Don't miss it. Have a great night and God bless.